Morning class, I'm Will Kemp from Will Kemp Art School and in this lesson we're going to put more detail into the piece we've already started, just tweaking it about a bit, bring it to a finish. So once we've got the painting blocks in like this, we can now start to go in with a bit more detail, depending on how much you want to add more detail into the piece. Areas of the sky, like up here, are quite like this. You know, it's got a bit of movement in it, a bit of blending, but some parts here in the foreground still feel like they need a bit more work and a bit more definition onto this house. So I'm just going to use a smaller brush. This is quite a fine brush, just for a couple of lines that I'm after, just to add a bit more detail to get that focal point in the painting. So now just using a round brush, this just gives me a bit more control with the painting. If you want to darken down your green a bit, and you don't want it to be too green, you can just add a bit of the crimson into it, and it'll just get this really nice dark. That's going to be great, like at the base of this tree. What you'll notice happens to the purple when I start to put this yellow next to it is it suddenly starts to look brighter because you've got its complementary colour next to it. Yellow is opposite purple on the colour wheel and when they're next to each other they kind of have a vibrancy to them. And it really um, it is great for impressionistic techniques because if you start to put these little dashes of yellow in between the purple they really start to kind of dance and zing on the eye. To add a bit more feeling of light coming on here, I'm going to lighten up this side of the building. It just gives more of an idea that this is in shadow. A 
little tractor in the field there. This is just with that pure red. But you see how when this red again starts to be next to the greens, suddenly it sets all the other colours working next to each other. I might put a bit of this red over here as well, next to this bottom of the green there. Just a few little dashes. It just helps to, to bring them to life a bit. Sometimes with acrylics, depending on the opacity of the pigment, or if you're using artist quality or student quality, using this sort of technique when you're working on top of other colours, you might need to go over them a couple of times just to make sure you've still got a nice clean colour. So with this yellow, I'm just going to work it on top of the yellow I've already put on. See on there, I've started to get some of the colour coming through underneath, but I just want it to be a bit more solid. Again, bringing these colours so that they're all around the painting. Now I'm going to use the crimson um, with the ultramarine blue just to give me another purple. You notice how this is a bit more muted. This is for areas where I feel that um, the kind of lavender could just go a bit darker. So for these lighter areas, it's more like a, because we've done lots of crisscrossing, this is more like a downward mark that I'm making. And again, I keep on doing a few dashes and then changing the pigment slightly, making it a bit darker or twisting that brush so it starts to mix it in a bit more. Still that white on the top of the mountain. I've lost the shape a bit here. I'm not too worried about that. I might just enhance the white a bit. Paint it quite thinly. Again, using quite a broken stroke, you know, I'm, I'm not kind of dabbing on this, I'm just getting some of that variety in it, so I still get some of these colours we've built up underneath shining through. So now we've got to the end of stage three of this painting, make sure you sign up so you don't miss out on next week, the final part, where we bring the foreground to a finish and bring it all together. This is Will Kemp from Will Kemp Art School.